game, 48 minutes of game, in fact. And uh, up next, we're going to talk about branding, marketing, uh, social media, you name it. We got us a guru here. He's not, you know, you know, look, he's not hanging back with the punches. He's just coming with the full knockout. He goes by the name of Christopher Lewis. What's up, Chris? Unmute your mic, Chris. We got to be over What's here. What's going on, everybody? Sorry about that. And yeah, I'm not a yeah, we go. I don't know how to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Chris, we're going to be talking about branding and marketing with you. And I would, I, I would give you the guru, but you are a Facebook expert. And Facebook has given you the stamp of being one of the top guys over there and understanding how to market on Facebook. So could you drop a few gems on us about this is for people that don't quite understand why it's important to have somebody like you on their team to help run their Facebook ads. So how why is it important to have you on their team as a Facebook expert? Um, because the bigger companies are hiring me to put the smaller companies out of business. So that's, oh, that's a good example. <laughs> that's that good is. Example. That is a good example. So, so Chris, we got a question right there at the bottom for you. Okay. Videos or photo ads? Which one of those do better? Bring that up, Kennedy. There you go. 15 seconds video. I find it converts very well, uh, converts a lot faster. As you know, people, um, behavior habits has changed. Static image used to work. It's still kind of still work but I see better success with video ads, uh, especially 15 seconds. Even if you're using a product image or carousel, just put it into a video and just show a slide of a video and like three seconds representing your brand. So, and it converts very well. Wow, okay. Kennedy, bring that next question up. We got, we're gonna have some questions for you. Ah. Click funnels or, or direct uh, to sale page. All right, depend on the objective of the problem, uh, what you're trying to promote. So ClickFunnels is definitely great for any info product, the um, physical products too as well. It allows you to upsell, cross sell, however, but even sending traffic to your landing page is also is the best option for you, especially if you have um, any email capture leads in, in place. So it all depends on your business, your business type and what your main objective is because it, you can use either or. Either or, and and see, I, I've 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 watched so many different like uh, promotional videos that talk about running ads and you know a team running ads for you and you know if you're running a business you're definitely going to have to expand the way this market is today because most of it's social media right mm -hmm. and if you could tap in and get into as many people phones or laptops as possible you're going to have a better chance of being successful in the market so how does how does the Facebook ads correlate with Instagram? This is for my people that are not heavy on Facebook, but are heavy on Instagrams. Which platform should you actually run and track your ads through? Um, so what platform, basically, as you know, Facebook owns Instagram. Um, if you're running, a lot of times uh, people tend to uh, boost ads or boost on Instagram and they think they're running ads, but they're really not running any type of ads. It's just boosting them within a circumference or just getting a, a reach. Um, if you want to have more control over your audience, um, audience engagement, uh, people that are hitting up your DMs, you definitely want to do it on the back end of Facebook. Um, the great thing about you know doing doing things on Facebook within the business manager, you're allowed to set up these custom audience. So I can set up a custom audience so in of uh, people who send me dms and use that as an audience to reach other people uh, for look like audience to reach other people i can set up a custom audience of people who engage with any post or ad that i i created um in the last 360 so within the last year i can create an audience of all my ig engagers within the last year and start re-engaging with those people again as an audience so it, wow. it, has, it has this play so, so when you when you talk about engaging um, the audience, what exactly does that inquire? Engaging the audience is basically recommunicating with them. So all of you, 
all depends on what your objective is. Um, you send in a cold campaign, you're reaching an audience, they probably visit your website, they clicked around, but they didn't take any action. But you want to right. follow up with a retargeting campaign where you're re-engaging with the audience. Like, hey, I saw you visit my website. Hey, I saw that you took a, you looked at this product, but you didn't complete the checkout. So you want to re-engage with these audience and try to push them down the lower part of your funnel so they could obviously convert either into a lead um, for you to hop on a sales call or convert into an actual e-commerce um, purchase, which is a purchase conversion. That is a purchase conversion. Kennedy, bring that question up. Man, we, we got a lot of questions for you today. Do you need a large budget to run effective ads? All depends on what your objective is. If you are if you don't have a large budget, you can start with five. Um, I think that's a that's a budget for certain for smaller business that want to try to test it out. Or you can start with a, mini, uh, a minimum of a thousand dollars. However, when you're considering your budget, remember your budget is going to break into three parts. Eighty percent of your budget is going to be towards your prospecting. Fifteen percent of that budget is going to be to your reengagement, and five percent of that budget will be for your retargeting. So once you know those three numbers, you can allocate your budget to what you really want, you know, to do with it. Wow. You, Chris, we have to rewind that. Can we get those three things one more time so that everybody understand? What, because it's, it's, this is game. This is 48 minutes of game. Yeah. And what we want to do is be able to showcase why you are a Facebook expert and why people should utilize your service and help them build their brand and their business. Yeah, so you spend a lot more money reaching a colder audience. Facebook is in the game to spend money and they wanna make money. So, but if you're reaching a colder audience, you're gonna spend more regardless. Um, so that's why 80% of your budget is gonna be for the prospect and to reach that colder audience to try to bring them in. Once you bring them to the website, your budget starts to uh, limit, you start to come with a smaller budget. So 15% of that is going to be re-engaging those people that visit your website and take any action, but you're trying to bring them back. And then the 5% of that budget is just re-engaging to people that may add items to the cart or they completed an application, but they didn't submit it. And you want them to take that last final action to complete that, that transaction. So 80, 80%, but 80% is for prospecting, 15% for re-engagement and 5% of your budget is for retargeting. Wow. Now, uh, do you do you have a course or are you selling courses right now that you could teach people to learn how to do Facebook marketing or they just I, got to solely source you? Um, I am. I do have a couple of coaches, uh, students that I am coaching right now and I am putting my course together. I'm in the process of, of that, but I'm busy working with everybody else account and making sure that I help my small business and grow because I feel like it's very important. Um, when the pandemic hit, a lot of small business was going to get affected. And I felt like it was my, I had to, I had to help my community. And by doing that, I had a skill that is able to generate money for businesses. So I wanted to help small business, especially black owned businesses. And I, I just helped the, all my small black business to keep their head above waters. That's amazing. That, that is a gem right there. So, uh, Kennedy, bring up that last question. Uh, free ebook to get emails you could do either or you could sell an ebook or you could use it as a free lead gen it's either or it's your it's your choice um you could sell a, you could sell an ebook for like a five uh actually seven dollars or uh fifteen dollars or twenty dollars as a ticket uh, as a low ticket item and then upsell them into something else or you could use it as free game for to for to you depend on what your objective is you could either sell it or use it to capture some information so you could bring somebody into your whole ecosystem where you retarget or engage to try to push them into something else. Wow. So does, so does, is there a big difference between Facebook um, marketing and like a YouTube marketing? Is there a big difference or what's the success with difference between the two? Yeah. So, if you have Facebook and Instagram, that's one side of things, right? That's disruptive marketing. So what you're doing, you're in, you're disrupting somebody scroll through the phone um, by having an engaging ad that capture your attention, to look at the copy, they boom, they, you take them to somewhere else. Where uh, YouTube ads is mostly Google ads, is a Google display, um, and that is you're popping up your 
you're popping up your ad on somebody's on some on the front of somebody's web uh video or, or playlist or, or whatever. So it's two different things. So YouTube is YouTube is Google, Facebook and IG is just Facebook and IG. That makes sense. Uh, she said, "Do you enjoy doing the business?" So Kennedy, bring that last. Yep. Do you enjoy doing this business? I do because I love helping out people. That's always been one something I wanted to do from younger. Um, but I feel like it's better teaching somebody to fish for their own, so they can for so they can feed for a lifetime. That's a, that's a, that's a true statement, and you know you get to make your own hours. You know, you get to work mobile. So I'm pretty sure you can work from anywhere in the world. Yes. <laughs> and that's, so I would call that freedom when you are able to grow other people's business, which grows your business. And then you can work from anywhere in the world and get your job done. Yeah. That, and, that's, that's a heck of a job. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy before all this happened, I was a front desk agent. So anything is possible. That, <laughs> that's your, and that story, that story is amazing. And that show you how sometimes we got to tap into our genius. And when you tapped into your genius, you, you found what your 10 is. Like you found something that you're not only engaged in, you also are a student. Am I correct? You're yeah. continually learning. You have good mentors. So let's talk about the mentors that have helped you gain the knowledge that you have but I know you're continually working with those mentors. How how important are they to your success? Uh, my mentor, Patrick Wynn, uh, he changed. He helped change my whole my whole life in a way. And it was so crazy. Before I started marketing inside the U.S. market, I was marketing the European market, and I learned how to run ads in Barcelona. So it's crazy that I I learned how to run ads in a more harder environment because it's not easy getting success out there you can get tremendous amount of success but it's a, it's, it requires more work and you have to be more strategic in what you're doing and i learned that my mindset from working with a lot of the guys in, the, in my mastermind group and how my mentor is and stuff like that and i took that principle and i took that skill that i learned in the european market and applied it to the us and that's how i was able to get the success that i i have right now with it that's amazing so you're like you're a lifelong learner, and I know you continually learn um, different things every day to really maximize everything for your customer or for the consumer. Yeah. I know that's true. Very, very true. So is there, uh, I'm looking at TikTok, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Are there marketing strategies for those social media platforms? Yes. And if they are, how familiar are you with them or or are they just a whole different lane? Um, there are different strategies for that. TikTok is one thing. Um, LinkedIn is a whole nother beast. Um, LinkedIn can be ex expensive, but LinkedIn is very successful depending on your business and what you're trying to do with that. If you're looking to get more, if you're a service-based business and you're trying to get more high ticket clientele, LinkedIn is definitely the place you want to be. Um, if you're trying to build up your social media presence and build your brand in and stuff like that. You, you, you leverage TikTok. I won't say put your all everything into TikTok. As we know, TikTok is a Chinese owned company and there's a lot of things that's going around um, saying that they may ban TikTok from the US. So don't put your, all your eggs no. in one basket, but monetize it for what it is for right now. And then take that data or that, that energy that you got with TikTok and bring it and transfer it over. Um, Twitter, I'm not too familiar with Twitter. Um, I kind of stay in my room. Um, I'm really good with Facebook and IG and I just know a, a bit of Google and that's where I kind of stay at. Okay, nice. So we got just a few more questions for you. And hopefully we'll be sure. able to answer any other questions that are going. So, um, when we're posting, right, I'm mm -hmm. posting and I, I want to, uh, I want to, draw um attention to a page so let's say i have a facebook page and i want to get followers like i want to build my follow how do i do that with marketing and branding through facebook 
Well, are you trying to do it organic way, which is you just normally post it and it's a re-engaging day by day? Or no, if I want to I I put some money into it. All right. So if you're trying to put money into it, you will run a, a engagement campaign where you're running a campaign where you have people either like, share, or comment on your on your post and to gain followers. So you use that engagement. If you want to bring people to your website, then you use a traffic campaign to push traffic to your website. If you're trying to build your brand, you use a brand awareness campaign to communicate that message about your brand and introduce yourself to the market. Um, if you want to get sales, you do a conversion campaign. So all, everything has its own pocket and its own. What you're really, what is your main objective for it? I, you just answered all three of my questions. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and, <I'm sorry. laughs> no that is that is phenomenal chris listen i appreciate you so much for coming on 48 minutes a game and giving so many jewels how can our audience find you or for viewers because we're going to post this everywhere how can they find you and get a hold of you all right um you can visit my website it's www.mrroas.com so it's m-i-s-t-e-r-r-o-s-a no, R O A S Roas, um, or you can visit my IG, which is Christopher Lewis under slash seven one eight. So yeah, and they, they can send you a DM. Oh yeah, definitely send me a DM. Um, I'm, I'm always here to help out. I'm, I'm I love helping out my people, and I'm just helping, trying to get every to help everybody just put money in their pocket so they can take care of their family. We got one last question. Uh, bring that question up for me, uh, Kennedy. Okay. I've seen a question come in. How do you generate branding concepts? What you mean? Branding concepts, Kennedy? Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I've seen the question. Uh, Kennedy, what do they mean by that question? Yeah, if, they, if they're looking for branding concepts, I would say like, is this you knowing what your brand is? What is the message you're trying to have behind it? And that will help you put that whole idea or ideology of what your brand represents, what your mission is, and what you're trying to do to help um, and change, help people's lives or just whatever your objective is. Um, that's how you come up with your concept. I hope I answered your question. I would also piggyback on that um, and say that you should ask yourself the question, who am I speaking to? So I think if you answer that question, who's the audience that I'm trying to reach, it'd be a lot more specific for you to, to generate a content. If you answer that question, you're like, okay, well, I'm speaking to basketball players. All right, so let me get a concept yeah. that relates to basketball players. Yeah. I think you answered that perfectly. And you gave us some fire, fire, fire content today, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. But what's okay. like, also like, it takes time. Like as you go along and you find yourself, you start changing your message. So what you start out with, your main concept doesn't be the end product. You change it as you start figuring things out. I agree, no, man. That's, that, that's something that we do in basketball all the time. You got to pivot. So at any moment, you have to be willing to change. So if I'm watching something and I've seen you do it, when you're watching something, you realize, okay, we can, we need a quick pivot. And so we can win. We're trying to adjust during the game so we can win the game. That's all we're trying to do is win the game. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> And we're winning already. Thanks so much, Chris, for being on the show. You gave us a bunch of gems. So I'm going to pivot real quick. I mean, Chris, at the beginning of the show, you talked about energy. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a quote about energy. Um, and it's from Newton's Law. If you guys are familiar, back in elementary school, the science, Newton's Law, says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, it can only be transformed or transform, transferred from one form to another. So you talked about protecting. Let me hit you with it again. Let me hit you with it again. Let me, let me hit you with it again. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, it can only be transformed or transferred from one form to another. So we talk about protecting our energy. Make sure who you surround yourself with has the right energy. Yeah. Birds of a feather flock together. So if you round people who have negative energy, then they're gonna transfer that negative energy to you. If you round people like Chris Johnson who have positive energy, they go hit you with that positive energy. What you gotta say about that, Chris? 
Man, I I think I mean right there we're gonna we're gonna end the show just the way you killed it because energy can be transformed or it can be it can be transferred. And I thought Kennedy killed it with that, guys, because you have to protect your energy. What is your energy on? Make sure the people that you're around is providing you with the right amount of energy or they're matching your energy. The one thing I have a good little illustration for you. Anytime you turn on the lights, you have to pay for that energy every time. So value the energy that you bring into a room and people have to pay for that. Okay, we out 48 minutes a game.